Now, every year we single out one member of the community for this Laura Arriaga and Friesen Social Impact Award. And now I thought I was going to be doing this unveiling of the surprise nominee, but then someone pointed out to me, I was saying, shh, don't mention the name. They said, it's on the program. <laughs> so, shows what I know. Okay. Um, but, uh, so you already know who it is, but let me just um, mention what the word is about. We, we um, single out a member of our community that we think has gone above and beyond in their um, dedication and work to, for SV2 and for our grantees, showing a deep and consistent commitment to our engaged giving model, both within SV2 and in the broader community. Now, this year's um, winner, Tony Stainer. <laughs> Uh, we, we thought about Tony, he's been a partner since 2013, and he's came to us with a lot of experience in the social sector, he's been on many boards, and was particularly deep around impact investing. And at SV2, he's really helped us to build a successful impact investing program, and also led a set of educational activities that partners have found really valuable about aligning your investments with your values. This have been really, I think, thought-provoking for the partnership. And in addition to bringing all that to the table, he's really been a strong leader on the board. He's uh, led our finance committee for three years. He's helped us get to a stronger, more sustainable business model as a part of that. Uh, he's been on the executive committee of the board and has been involved in a number of key processes, including um, our CEO search process, which led to us hiring Linda, as well as being the current steering committee lead on our, um, our um, uh, visionary leadership circle, VLC. So that's our group of major donors that really helped to fund some of SV2's core operations, and Tony's been a leader in that area as well. Um, I think the other thing is people who have worked with him would, would agree with me is that on his, he's really a great uh, team player, very collaborative, and brings a lot of insight and wisdom to all the discussions we have on different issues around SB2. And beyond that, I think um, my view is he's just a really down-to-earth, nice guy. And that's important, too. Um, I, I was reflecting on a time about a year and a half ago where my wife, Kimberly, was off at the Women's March in Washington. My kids are away. I'm kind of home alone for the weekend. And Tony called me and said, hey, you want to come over and play some poker? And um, so I said, sure. And I thought, well, that's really a nice gesture. And I went and played poker with his friends. Now, my poker skills were a little bit rusty. And I have to say, they kind of cleaned me out that night. <laughs> but I still felt it was a very nice gesture. <laughs> so with that, let me uh, introduce to you our Laura Ariaga and Dreesen Social Impact Award winner for this year, Tony Stainer. <laughs> Gosh, thanks. <laughs> no, I really want to thank the uh, select selection committee. This is really quite an honor, and I, I can't tell you how thrilled and touched and truly humbled I am um, to receive this. So thank you, and um, I want to really thank my family as well. Uh, they provided support, especially my wife Beth, and I'm really delighted that two of my children are here tonight, Grace and Don. I have a third child who is working in L.A. and uh, couldn't make it up. But, but anyway, he called right before, so it was really sweet of him. So, anyway, um, I also like to thank Lance Fors, who was uh, a former uh, board chair, who somewhere around a decade ago uh, did a presentation on SV2 to a group I was at, and it wasn't right for me then, but I just filed it away, and you know, I said, you know, at some point this is going to be right. And then I was uh, in a group called the Philanthropy Workshop, and um, Kelly Pope showed up and presented on, um, on SV2. And I said, the time's right, and they reminded me of why, um, why I wanted to join. So I did. Kelly, thank you very much. You, were, uh, you get a huge assist for, uh, for that. Um, and it was at TPW that I realized that, you know, if you're going to do this work in this giving back phase, it's a hell of a lot more fun to do it with a like-minded group where you can continue learning all the time. And SV2 has been that group for me, and it's been that group and more. So, um, so it's, you know, for as much as I feel like I give, I get even more. Um, so that's wonderful. Um, when I think of SV2, I think of many of you. 
and the work you're doing. Get the glasses on here. Um, it's truly the amazing people in this room that I've gotten to know, the causes you care about, and how you're approaching your work. Um, the heartful SD2 staff, and all of us learning together how to be more effective while having some fun along the way. The world's problems are too large, too urgent, and our collective resources, even our collective resources, are too small to make a dent unless we're all working together smarter, zeroing in on root causes and finding leverage points to catalyze change. Let me talk a bit about my causes and approaches and how SB2 has influenced all this. My main causes are access to clean water and sanitation and the climate crisis. Besides SV2, I'm on the boards of Water.org and the Pacific Institute, and I mentor social entrepreneurs in the water and climate spaces, and I also make impact investments. So why water? To me, it's unforgivable that today 2.4 billion people don't have access to clean water and or sanitation, a human right that is fundamental to everything we hold dear in life. Of those 2.4 billion, about 800 million of them um, could afford uh, a loan if one were available. And in the case of water, it's usually at a fraction of the price. Water.org identified access to affordable loans as a root cause and is all in on catalyzing change to the financial system to make these loans available. They will reach 65 million people in the next five years after taking 20 years to reach the first million. Did I say the repayment rate on these loans is 99.61%? Um, the Pacific Institute is a water sustainability think and do tank that creates and advances science-based research solutions to the world's most pressing water challenges. The climate crisis is the existential threat of our time, and the resource that will be most impacted is water. The Pacific Institute has had remarkable impact over time. Their work was cited extensively, uh, when uh, access to water and sanitation was named as a human right in 2010, they published the first paper on the impact of climate change on fresh water supplies, while specifically looking at the consequences of an early melt of the snowpack in California. Let me tell you, this was in 1987, so how prescient was that? So this idea of looking at the horizon is what they do. Um, they chair a forum at the UN uh, for global corporations to trade best practices on how to sustainably manage their water throughout their operations. And I view their work today uh, as more important uh, at a time when environmental policies and even facts and science are under attack. I also want to mention that my wife, Beth, serves on the board of the Compassion Institute, who is methodically bringing the teachings of the Dalai Lama around compassion to the world. So this is another cause we care deeply about as a family. Many of you around SV2 know me for my work in impact investing. Philanthropy is dwarfed uh, by the amount of money that is invested. Being from a business background, I realize the power of markets and how much promise there is in unleashing those forces to solve our biggest problems. I started looking at the data and found that one could get market returns while making investments that align with your values. I joined Tonic, which is a network of impact investors, to learn more and a subgroup that commits uh, to invest 100% of a portfolio to impact. A year, year or two after this, I was delighted that SV2 began its impact investing working group, and I joined that too. It was an easy decision for us to commit our donor advised fund to 100% impact. This was money that was already earmarked for philanthropy, and if our investments earned a little more or a little less, we'd still be able to donate virtually the same amount annually while increasing our impact through those investments. The goal was to have a portfolio to be a model that achieved the market-based returns while having meaningful impact. Meanwhile, as Stephen Colbert might say, <laughs> when the microfinance institutions that Water.org was using to make water and sanitation loans became capital constrained, Water.org began raising a fund from private investors to allow those microfinance institutions to scale by providing capital from those investors who would be paid a concessionary 3% return with a seven-year lockup. This wasn't a market return, but the impact was enormous. It wasn't a grant or an investment, but it was a hybrid that was best for this situation. We went ahead with the investment and though not a market return, we consider the delta between the market return and the actual return to be an annual grant to water.org. 
the wheels started turning. Maybe the goal on investing wasn't to maximize return subject to impact, but to view the corpus and the annual gifts to be a single entity whose purpose was to help drive change in the ways we care most about. I read and heard authors Morgan Simon at SV2 uh, and also Jed Emerson and Joel Solomon talk about the purpose of capital. And maybe the purpose wasn't to die with the most, but to invest transformationally to create the world we want now and for generations that follow. I think about this a lot. I think about what this means to us and our portfolio, and it's truly all a work in progress. I appreciate the conversations I've had with several of you on these topics. And I also think about how to bring more of my heart into this work as well as my head. It feels surprisingly good to make an investment that makes a difference. <clears throat> Even more so if you can connect with the beneficiary. But when you're an environmentalist, how do you connect with the beneficiary? This question inspired SV2's upcoming trip to a sustainable forest in Northern California, where while hiking through the redwoods, or the other trees, we will learn how ecological practices have benefits, uh, have benefits in deep carbon sequestration to our water supplies, for fire resiliency and biodiversity, all while targeting double-digit returns to investors. I really appreciate our quarterly SV2 Impact Investing Interest Circle meetings where we discuss these kinds of issues and other issues related to values aligned investing across asset classes. So SV2 has been wildly successful with its traditional venture philanthropy model of finding potentially game-changing nonprofits at an inflection point, giving them multi-year unrestricted capacity building grants and beyond the dollar support to scale their operations. Over recent years, though, SV2 has shown a boldness and adventurousness that moves well beyond venture philanthropy and is a model to all of us. From co collective impact tackling third grade reading deficiencies with the big lift, to a year-long focus on how to use advocacy to move the needle on our work, to a multi-year endeavor to learn about and address the large and growing inequalities in Silicon Valley that were brought to light by the Giving Code, which was co-authored by SV, SV2 partner Alexa Cortez Colwell. So how has SV2 influenced me? There are certainly specific things that I can point to. The Giving Code has made me more aware of Silicon Valley inequalities and, how, and now we give more locally. The advocacy learnings prompted me to support nonprofits tar targeting voter registration and get out the vote efforts for underrepresented groups in key swing states to impact elections that ultimately will bring more climate friendly policies. One of the impact investments I'm most excited about is the investment we made alongside SD2 and Village Enterprise's first pay for success development impact bond to, to alleviate extreme poverty in Africa. There are many more specifics, but the real influence is that I feel like I'm following SV2's lead of being bolder and more adventurous in my work. I'm more willing to look at a new approach, more willing to articulate what my next step is, and then find someone who knows more than me to discuss it with. I had the pleasure of sitting next to an 83-year-old Tonic member a few weeks ago. During a long and very, very wide-ranging conversation, he said something that stuck with me. Today, more than ever, our society has forgotten that life is analog and not digital. We aren't philanthropists or not. We aren't impact investors or not. We aren't transforming the world or not. But these are knobs that we're just turning slightly up or down. So whatever you care most deeply about, whether you're addressing the wealth gap for people of color, the inequalities of our educational system, the climate crisis, political dysfunction, or our disappearing coral reefs. Find a root cause. Take advantage of this wonderful learning community that is SB2. Be bold and adventurous as you learn to be more effective. And turn the knob a little bit more towards transformational change so we can all work together to make this the kind of world we want to live in. Thank you again. Not so fast to make me back here. <laughs> there is actually an award that goes with this. <laughs> so I am honored. Thank you. I remember chasing.
leaving um, one of our one of our gatherings, and and I I just said Jen Rute was there, and I was like, I think I better go back out and bring them back in, <laughs> and I did, and I'm really glad I did that because the rest is history here. So, oh, thank you, thank you again. <laughs>